to have seen everybody. You're gone now. But uh, welcome. Let's praise Jesus. Jesus, thank you for being so awesome and amazing. We just want to bless you today with our voices, even if they sound bad or we're a little off or whatever. We just want to love you. We just want to know you. We appreciate you because you're awesome and you're good and your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for giving us a clean slate on the cross. We love you. Amen. of eternal promise stirring in your sons and daughters earth revealing heaven's wonders spirit come spirit come what you spoke is now unfolding All your children shall be holding dreams awaken in this moment spirit come spirit come pour it out let your love run over
Mother's Day, Yeah. Everyone. Welcome to the Rock Church, where our mission is helping families changing, changing lives in the awesome, amazing love of God. We're so glad you guys are here. My name is Bethany, if I haven't met you yet. I'm the outreach pastor here at the Rock Church. And as I was reading my Bible this morning and just thinking about Mother's Day, and it's a great day. I don't know if you know this, but my, my daughter is adopted. All four of Terry's kids are adopted, so for us, it's it's different. It's like we chose, we chased after, we wanted to be parents. So the fact that um, my daughter Grace's birth mother walked through her pregnancy and chose to give her to me, like it's a crazy story because my first husband had cancer at the time, and she still chose to place her baby with me and. She's not, I don't see her here. I'm, I don't see her here today. <laughs> like, wait, she didn't even ask, but it's okay. I love her to pieces. Her name is Grace because she was our gift from God. But anyway, I was reading um, in Romans this morning, and I was just thinking about, God, if there was any advice that I could give, like, to my young mom self, <laughs> it would be to be the best Jesus follower that you can be. Because then you'll be the best mom 
that you can be. And so here's the beginning of Romans 12. In the message version, it says, So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him and for your kids. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Recognize what God wants from you and quickly respond to it and let your kids see that. <laughs> Unlike the culture around you, which is always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you. He develops well-formed maturity in you. And then further down in Romans, it talks about the body of Christ and how we as the church are all part of this body. We are, some of you are hands and some are feet and some are ears and some are eyes and some are hearts and some are lungs, the ones that give the breath. Uh, and together, the church family, we build each other up, right? That's what God gave us each other for. So moms here today, <laughs> look around you. This is your family. When you're feeling like you're missing a hand, Look around. Okay, these are the people that are the rest of the body of Christ. Don't miss that. You were not designed to do this by yourself. <laughs> Even if you're a single mom here today, you were not created to raise your kids by yourself. That's what we're here for. This is what yeah. a church family is here for. So if you see a single mom who's struggling, please reach out to them and say, I want to be the hand that you're lacking today or the ear that you're missing today when you have no one to listen to you and no one to just have a, a hug. Sometimes you just need a hug. Sometimes you literally need five minutes. <laughs> um, please reach out. You can always text the Rock Church number, and even if I can't help you personally, I will find someone who can. <laughs> that's the cool thing about knowing lots of people knowing like when we get together with you guys and we invite you out for lunch and talk to you we learn your life and we learn who you are and the gifts that God has given you I, I feel like I'm like in the coolest position ever because when someone reaches out that I can be like wait I can find someone to help you with that. I can. I know someone who does electrical. Wait, I know someone who can watch kids. I can help you with that. So at the end of the chapter in Romans 12, it says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. <laughs> and sometimes, moms, that's just like, we have to be who we are and not compare ourselves to other people and how other someone else is momming because God created you to be you. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run from evil and hold on to good for dear life. Be a good friend who loves deeply. Practice playing second fiddle or being humble. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Who does that? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's right. Good answer. <laughs> Be alert, servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in the hard times. Pray even harder. <laughs> it's a great message for moms. <laughs> yeah, can I read the next verse? Oh, yes. I want to read the next verse. And if that doesn't work, text Pastor Terry. He'll bring you duct tape. <laughs> 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 or that. That works too. <laughs> I always have a roll of Gorilla Tape in my truck, honey. You do, yes. Comes in handy. Right, Steve? You probably have a roll of that stuff in your truck. If you work construction, you need Gorilla Tape every once in a while. I'm just saying. You raise kids, you probably need multiple rolls. Just to let you know. But we're really glad you're here this morning. I just had we to be are. serious, we're you know. We're glad you're here. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, and it is Mother's Day. We have this really cool um, 
backdrop photo booth yes. place type thingy. Photo op over here with all kinds of flowers, and I love it. Thank you, Danny and Shannon, who put that together. Please yeah. take your picture before you go. Tag the Rock Church Kiski Valley so that lots of people see your pictures online. That's always fun. And, oh, free, two free donuts for all the moms. Or if you're um, eating healthy this week, oatmeal, you could also have oatmeal. I highly recommend a raspberry drizzle and chocolate chips on your oatmeal, though. Yes. <laughs> really And if good. you really want to have fun in your mom, eat your donuts in front of your kids and don't buy them any. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's like oh, yeah, the that's ultimate, so, you know? So fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have all these good ideas, yeah, don't I? It's so wonderful. I love it. That's why I'm here to give all the good ideas to everybody. All the good ideas. Because I think of those all the time. <laughs> yeah, so our computer is actually working this service, which is really good because last service in the middle, like uh, we went through the songs and all of a sudden it went black and then it said installing updates and we were like 3%. So it was really fun for like 15, 20 minutes. We didn't have a computer. But hey, it's working yes. now and all that good so stuff. Now if you're visiting with us, you can know yes. where, where, to, where go. to go. Yourrock.org. Yes. And let us know your name and number. Or I can chase you down. That also works. <laughs> yes. And if you want to give, you can also give at yourrock.org. Any of the pages, the little purple plus sign works. Or, or if you have cash or checks, have cash. we have little green boxes little green in the back. Yes. Little green men. Them. We need little, little green men. That would be really cool. Little green men that eat your money. That would be awesome. Yeah. And we just want to say thank you on your awesome score. You're <laughs> See, that was my today's. I liked Very it. Very awesome. Very awesome. So just want to let you know that. God's yeah. good. And then this week we got some things coming up. We're actually May 28th. We're having our Vandergrift offering day. Yay, it's it's going to be so exciting. exciting. I was actually finally heard from our architect this week. He's on a deadline and this week he's going to start talking to me. So we'll be starting the discussions Yay. of what we're going to be doing. And after we figure out what we're going to be doing, we'll be I'll be recruiting some units to come help demo stuff because we're going to be cutting sections of the building out and doing some things to make it different. So it's going to be so cool, but it's going to be awesome. And God's going to supply all our needs according to the riches in glory. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. And I'll go with that. <laughs> and then we got community outreach. Woohoo! May days. days. This Saturday. If you'd like to help. Did I spell it right this time? Was I it know. days? I don't think so, but it doesn't matter. It's all good. <laughs> I don't know how they're spelling it. So it's May days. It's this Saturday. The but 20th. it is this Saturday, yes. And we'd love to have you come help. And we're going to yes. take the rock wall and a bounce house and, mm -hmm. and do some fun stuff right there in the circle right beside. In Apollo. Yes, in Apollo, right yeah. beside the Rite Aid, yeah, and by the bridge, across, across the road, yeah. by the towers. So <laughs> you'll find us in that area. And we'll be doing that kind of stuff too. And then we've got on, ready for it, on May 26th at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be doing a campfire. We're playing Yay! volleyball. And it's my wife's birthday. It's my birthday! So she wanted to have this. So she wants you all to come. Yep. So if and it's really going to be fun because we're going to put her behind a thing. We're going to throw cakes at her. Okay. That'll be fun. Just let you know. All right? <laughs> So we're going to have some whipped cream. We're going to have fries. She didn't know that part, but she said it'll be fun. Everyone heard her say it'll be fun, right? All right, we're doing it. Can I wear sunglasses? No. Yeah. Jean says no. get in my eyes. That will hurt. Close them. That's all I can tell you about that. Close them, muggers. <laughs> so it is Memorial Day weekend. So if it is Memorial Day weekend. Town, please come yes. have a campfire with us and play sand volleyball. Yes. And we need some help. Yes, we need some help getting it ready. Court. The sand volleyball court's ready yeah. and the net's getting tightened and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you'd like to help, I volunteered a few people, so I'll volunteer some more if we don't get any help. Sam's going to help. I know he is because he told me so. So just let you know. <laughs> I just want to thank Sam. Actually, we were yes. away last week and our septic tank backed up. And we had all kinds of septic tank issues, and Sam handled it this week. He called me and said, I hate to bug you, but they said you're the only one who knows the septic system. So Sam now knows the septic system. So if you ever need somebody to help with the church septic system, call Sam. All right? See and how that works? Sam works really good, huh? So you're all blessed that you can actually use the bathroom yes. today because if Sam hadn't handled it, <laughs> there would be, yeah. just hold it till you get home. <laughs> yes, that's the bad part of a rural church where you have sec septic systems and sand mounds and all that stuff going on. But we got it all pumped out and it's working and doing what it's supposed to be doing. And he said, the septic guy said, you guys all need to quit pooing so much. That's all I can say. Because <laughs> it was full of poo. So just tell you, it's just straight up. Anyhow, but God's good. Yeah. 
And that's how I got, honey. Oh, I, oh. Just, I just thought of one more thing, too. Ladies, the She Is Community Night at Summit Church is Thursday, May 25th. I'll remind you again next Sunday. All right, sure, remind week. you next Sunday. That's next week. So. Yes, that's next week. Yeah. And I turned the air conditioning down. If you get cold, move to the middle. Okay, I'm just giving you the secret to our church. In the wintertime, if you're cold, sit on the outside because the heat runs out there. In the summertime, if you're cold, go to the middle because all the air conditioning goes out there. All right, so there, you got the secret of where to sit in case you're cold today. Because I started noticing, is everyone cool enough? Would you like it cold or everyone good? I was standing up here, and I was like, it started getting a little hot. I'm like, I need to turn the air conditioning down. And I thank God that we have air conditioning. Last year, we spent like $17,000 putting in air conditioning and new furnaces, and it works. So it's a good thing we got all that done, and we now have that stuff happening. God's so good, and God's so cool. It's a privilege to be back with you. Last week, we went to Myrtle Beach, and that's, I got my Myrtle Beach shirt on. I just want to dress crazy this morning. And I even went and got my Jesus sandals on. The first service, I had my red shoes on. But now I got my Jesus sandals on, which will probably come off because I can't move very fast in sandals. They fall off. So that's why you just kick them and run. Um, how many people are excited about sand volleyball? How many people like volleyball? Good. Praise God. How many people like to get hit in the head by No, not really. But if you don't like volleyball, sand volleyball is a lot more fun than normal volleyball. And we usually set up two courts, one for more competitive people and one for not so competitive people, just to let you know. And if you're competitive, you can play on the one court. I'll be on the non-competitive side because that's where I will always, I'm not very competitive, just to let you know. So that's where I'll be. I'll be over yonder. But it's going to be good. We're going to have a good time. God's good. Um, I have a really cool message for you this morning, actually a new series that I'm going to start this morning. And I have all the PowerPoints this time where I had to wait for the other ones. But I was really talking to God a lot. And it's kind of interesting um, doing what I do which I thank God for the privilege of pastoring a church, and I don't really feel like I'm the greatest pastor in the world, and I don't really, not sure that pastor is a good job description for what God has called me to do. I really feel like God has called me to be a motivator to somebody who pushes people to um, maybe more of a prophet line where I bring words from the Lord and stuff like that. So I'm not really like, a lot of pastors are like touchy feeling. Oh, I understand. I'm like, suck it up, buttercup. I mean, just that's why I offer duct tape and things like that. Because how many know life's hard? I just want to tell you something. If you're here, life's hard. If you're online, life's hard. That's just part of life. You're going to get, you know, we were sitting there and I was talking to my son-in-law. And he kind of thinks the way I think for the most part. And, you know, we were sitting there and talking about it at dinner one night. And I said, everyone in this world has been abused. Everyone in this world has bullied somebody. You might not think you did, but you did. And I said, you know, and it dawned on me one day that everyone in this room, you are somebody's pain. In other words, when they think of your name, they think of you as somebody who has caused pain in their life. That's a fact of life. That all of us have been through all those things, but the good news is we can overcome through the power of Jesus Christ. And this morning I want to take you on a journey because I, I'm going to share some things with you I never thought. This week as I was, and when I go on vacation and stuff like that, it's not like I just forget about everything. It, it's really in my life when I go on a vacation, I really try, and try to make it a time of refreshing in my life and say, God, what are you up to? What are you doing? Those kind of things. Even though I'm sitting at Myrtle Beach and I'm sitting on the beach and playing in the waves, I actually had the really cool privilege of teaching my, both my grandkids how to dive through the waves which was really awesome, and it was really funny because there was lots of jellyfish there, and, and actually Grace Bethany's daughter was actually with us, and, and there was a jellyfish, and my, my granddaughter saw, heard Grace say, there's a jellyfish over there, she's, oh no, and Grace looked at my granddaughter and said, do you want to get out? And I said, we don't get out. I said, we face our fears. I said, if you're going to be in the ocean, there's jellyfish. If you're going to be in the ocean, there's sharks. If you're going to be in the ocean, there's all these kind of things. I said, we don't run from our fears, we face our fears. I said, if we run in from the fears, I said, we'll never enjoy the fun that is there. And, and I hope you understand that in life because it's what we're all going through. Nobody said this would be easy, but the cool part is when God grabs a hold of you and God uses you and God touches you and God anoints you, there will be pain in this life. There will be cost to things. 
like everything around us. If you're sitting here today, it's because someone invested in you. That costs something by them investing in you and nurturing you and loving you. Maybe it was when you were a little kid, someone drug you to church. Maybe it was an adult, someone invited you to church. Maybe it is that you are someone's daughter where they put in the pain and the suffering of raising you, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking about even my own mother. I, I had the really cool privilege this, or right before we left for vacation, I was waiting for Bethany to come home and she had bought me a Mother's Day card. Yes, my wife buys me all the cards that I need in order to do those things, uh, except for her birthday. I will have to buy one of those, so if I forget, remind me when it gets close, and if not, while well, you're throwing pies over and over and get one, okay? You distract her. It'll all work out. But I had a chance to really write my mom. My mom's 83 this year. My mom's not doing very well. She's getting older. If she lives another year, I'll be amazed. If she doesn't, it's okay. I know where she's going and what's going on. But I had a chance to write to her some cool things that I was thinking of. And one of the things I wrote in there to my mother was, I thank you that when I came home from school, you weren't watching TV, you were reading your Bible, or you were praying. Now, I'm pretty sure I was the cause of some of her prayers. Just saying, it's a possibility. I'm not sure, but maybe I helped inspire her prayer time. I don't know. Um, but the reason I wrote that is because when I was a little kid, whenever she was raising me and I was three and four before I went to, actually I filled out a kindergarten, I never went to kindergarten, they finally decided to just leave me there and I get started first grade, my mom taught me, so, um, but I remember on the afternoons, Days of Our Lives was on, that's what she watched, yes, that's how old Days of Our Lives is, just to let you know, all right, I'm sure it's not the same actors that are all dead, just to let you know that, all right. Um, if they are alive, they don't look as good as they did on there, just telling you straight up. But I remember that, and I remember coming home from school was in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade um, when all my other brothers and sisters were out of school and always finding my mom reading my Bible. And what my wife said, the greatest impact you can do as a mom is be a godly mom. And I can't say that enough because I'm here today because I had a godly mom. And I got to write to my mom my mom and I butt heads a lot. I butt heads with everybody. I'm just saying. That's just part of who I am. Uh, but, you know, my mom and I, when it comes to church, we went through a lot of battles and a lot of things where my mom would always tell me, well, pastors act like this. And I'd say, well, I don't. And it was just that simple. Like, she would see, if she saw me right now, she would be like, oh, my goodness. You know, I have holy jeans on, I got my flip-flops on, I got a tie-dye shirt on. You should have saw the tie-dye shirt my wife wouldn't let me buy. It was like bright yellow neon. I wanted it. She's like, you can't preach in that. I'm like, come on. I'm like, it might be a little much. I thought some of might have like ADD moments or, you know, go into seizure mode, so I didn't buy it. But anyhow, I wore this one. Because I really, I don't know about you, I love being crazy for Jesus Christ. I love walking with him and talking with him. And has it been a battle? Is it a trial? Yes. And as I was sitting this week beside the pool, and I started reading a book on the way to um, Myrtle Beach as we were driving, and it was called Creative Glory. It was a book that just jumped out at me, and it's been really interesting to me, and I've been reading it since that time. But I came upon a scripture, a very simple scripture. It's Genesis 1, 1 and 2. And I'm going to read it to you this morning and tell you what God's laid on my heart for the new series that I'm going to be doing called Wild Ones. And as I sat there, God started reminding me of this church and people. And as I sat there thinking about what God wants to do, God does not want our world to be in the mess it is right now, just to let you know that. God did, never wanted it to be man to go through the pains and no addictions and all the pain that there, God created man to be his friend, to be a relationship, for man to serve him because they wanted to and not forced to. And I may say some things this morning that will offend you, but it's because I love you. And I seriously mean that. I pray for you guys a lot, and I believe with all my heart that God has assembled you in this place, this building, even this morning, because he has great plans for you. Because, and I'm just going to say it straight up, I prayed for you. Because I asked God to bring people from the north and bring people from the south and bring people from the east and bring people from the west. I asked God to bring in people that, that would show people the glory of God, that would shine and that would be willing. And maybe you're a mess this morning, but God wants to use that mess so much for a message. 
God wants to use you for his glory and for his praise. And, and this morning I'm going to say some things that, you know, God's shown me in, in this series that I'm going to go through. It's not going to be real comfortable because, you know, I look at my life and if you would have told me a lot of years ago what my life would be like right now, I wouldn't have believed you. Now, I wanted to be a pastor. I wanted to preach the gospel. I knew God anointed me. I knew God called me. But if you would have told me that, that God's call on my life would be to build buildings, to basically push, push budgets that are really, really small and do incredible things with no money and to do all those kind of things, and someday I'm going to read you what God just recently spoke to me and you understand all those kind of things, I would have said that's not what I wanted to be. I, like, I wanted to be somebody that like, wow, Pastor Terry is really awesome. And I know I'm awesome. You don't have to tell me that. It's all good. But I, I wanted to be that pastor like that. I wanted to be someone like Steve Furtick, something like that. I didn't want to sit there and have to. How many ever saw the Sergeant York movie? Did anyone here ever see the Sergeant York movie? It's a really, really old movie. It's like from 1930. 332, but it's black and white. It's really long. But the story is of Sergeant York, and he was an amazing soldier in World War II that was a Christian that didn't start out as a Christian. But anyhow, it, one of his things that he complains about a lot is he's from Tennessee, obviously, and he always farmed the mountainsides where everything was hard. Like there was lots of rocks, there was lots of stuff and people would make fun of him because you know and everything that he tried to do to get easy it always got broken and it never worked that way sometimes you know in ministry world I felt that way it's like man some people get so easy but I've got to see God do miracles I mean I look around this church and you're one of those miracles now you're not there yet but God's trying to get you there God's trying to call you in. God's trying to say, are you willing to let go? Are you willing to do some things? Now, I want to talk to you over the next coming weeks about being a wild one and what God wants in your life, and, and, and you'll understand that at a later date. We're not gonna, you're not going to know about that this morning, but I never thought I'd be here. I remember whenever I got the phone call to pastor this church when it was a denomination, and I remember it was, I was deer hunting, actually, and I really think it was the first day of deer season, and I was out in the woods, and I had a cell phone, and my cell phone rang, and I answered the phone, and the guy on the other end was that time they called state overseers, and he said, I'd like you to go to Apollo. Would you consider taking Apollo? Now, that was the place I said I'd never go. God does those kind of things to you. And I remember answering it, and when I hung up the phone, and listen, I'm not here to scare anyone. I'm here to tell you my life, just a little bit of my life. And I know Joe told you his testimony, and I'm not doing it for that reason. I just, just what God laid in my house, what, my life. When I, I walked away, I took about four steps. I can literally remember being beside the logs that were there that they were cutting out of the woods and on the place. I could literally take you to the exact spot I was standing when I got this phone call. And I remember taking about three steps, and God said, if you go there, it'll cost you your family. And I went, what? And I remember stopping and thinking, God, that's really weird. And he went on and said, I want you to go there, but it's going to be expensive and it's going to cost you your family. And I was like, I didn't know what that meant and I don't want to even get into that part. But walking with God isn't always cheap. And the reason it's not cheap is because Jesus didn't pay a cheap price for you. Jesus gave everything he had. And and I can't even imagine, I remember you know, probably 2000, somewhere around there at that time, my then wife was actually uh, the um, office manager of a doctor's office, and she brought me home a magazine, it was from the um, American Doctors Association, I think is what it was called or something like that, that the only doctors got, and it was basically written by a few doctors that said, if Jesus was crucified as they say, this is what he would have went through. And you can actually read through what shut down and what happened and, and how his breathing was and, and all these kind of things. And I remember reading that, and I'm not a doctor by any strength of any measure of life, but I remember reading it as I read this article and they were talking about the pain that he went through and how his body would have swelled up and how that all this kind of stuff that... It, from the punching and the people pulling his hair out and pulling his beard out, if you read the scriptures and all that, that they said that most likely his head would have swollen up two to three times the size of a normal human being. Now you think about that. And the blood and the pain and the beating on his back. And we don't understand, you know, that, 
the Roman whip where it says he was struck 39 times with 39 stripes. The whip that the Romans used was completely different and it wasn't just 39 lashes, it was 39 hits of this whip that had leather on it with pieces of bone or pieces of steel that were tied into it that every time it hit your back it would literally tear his back and they talked about that and they talked about all that kind of stuff and why I'm, I don't want you to feel sad about it. I want you to understand what he paid for you. And you know what? He did it even if you sit here today and say, well, I don't believe in that whole Jesus thing. He still paid it for you so that you would have the chance to experience life and life more abundantly. Now, when I follow Jesus, it's going to cost me something. And I realize that through my life as I stand here today. And, and, you know, it's amazing. And I thank God for people that God's put in my life. And some of them are sitting here today. And, and I really thank God. And I'm just going to mention this. You know, like Steve P. Center, raise your hand, Steve, so they know you are. But, you know, I was struggling with Vandergrift really, really hard. Not you, Cindy. Keep your hand down. I said, Steve, <laughs> listen. Listen to the words. No, no. Listen to the words. Steve, raise your hand. All right, Steve, raise your hand now. Because I don't want them to think you're Steve, because you'd be an ugly Steve. Oh, man, you got to just disciple people everywhere you go. Bless Jesus. I love you, Cindy. But I remember I was struggling to it, and, and I told him, I said a conversation about even Vandergrift, and I'll never forget his words, and he looked at me and said, Pastor Terry, if anyone can do something, you can do it. And I thank God for that, Steve. That was a word from prophetic words speaking to my life of God saying, you can do this. You can, well, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But how many know in the natural, many times we go in the natural and we forget the supernatural? And I don't want you to do that this morning. God has called you and chosen you. And Jesus paid that amazing price for every person in this life. Whether you walk out of this room and say, I don't want him. And Pastor Terry's crazy. It's cool. I've been crazy crazy before. And I'll be probably, probably call it again. And probably even worse than that, I've been called too. It's all good. But you know what? God wants to use you. And everyone's sitting here. As I was sitting there this week and I was reading. And God was speaking to my heart what God wants to do through this place. Through this church. This where you are right now, where we are right now. And he was speaking it to me. God started showing me faces in front of my mind. And he's like, man, I want to use them. And literally, some means I want to slap. Because I wonder what you're waiting for. I wonder why you won't step into the place that God wants you to step into and be what God wants you to be. And I don't mean that in a mean sense, but, you know, some, I hear that Maria's really good at throwing a sandal. But maybe I can point you out and just say, Maria, get him. She's like, some people throw ninja stars, some people throw sandals. It's all of that. But you got to understand, God wants to do something so amazing through your life to change other people's lives. And you're here because someone gave their life for you. So I was sitting there, and as I was reading my Bible and stuff like that, I came upon a scripture that all of you are very most likely familiar with. If you ever open the Bible, it's the very first two scriptures you'll ever read in the Bible. And it's from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And I sat there beside the pool with my iPad, and I was sitting there, and my family was in the pool, and I was sitting there reading and trying to prepare for my message, knowing that I had to preach, knowing that I had to get ready, and all those kind of things. I'm like, God, what do you want me to say? I had heard a really amazing song, which you'll hear next week, driving down to the beach that was just, it's not a, a, a worship song. It's kind of a motivational song written by a Christian artist about a story, and I'll tell you a little about the story next week. But as I sat there and I listened to this song, and I never heard it before. I, I have Pandora radio on my phone, and it's really cool, or Pandora. And I found out that there's a button you can push that gives you only new songs, new releases. And I know a lot of you listen to like radio stations here, new releases. They aren't new. These are like new that are being released because they're on Pandora. They can release anything. They don't have to wait for it to be released by the artist. And it came on. I said to Bethany, I'm like, play that again. And she played it again. I'm like, look up the words to that song. Look up the history of it. And, and God wants to use you to change a world. Now listen, that's going to be outside of your plans, but it's going to be so amazing if you'll step into it. And I know it's hard sometimes to believe. I know we walk by faith and not by sight. And I know I wish sometimes I could just say, okay, God, show up, move that guitar. But God's not like that. God gave us that faith walk because everything that we're ever going to do for God is going to be released by my faith in my life, in your life, your faith, in your kid's life, their faith. 
And that's why my wife said the greatest thing you could ever do is be a godly mom that sits there and walks with God. Because it's not going to matter, and I love you, everyone into pieces that does this, it's not going to matter how many football games you went to of theirs, it's not going to matter how many baseball games, it's not going to matter what athlete they turn into. What's going to matter is where they stand when they stand at the end of the road of life, and they stand there and say, what did I become? And you have that chance as a mother, or you have a chance as a person in this church to radically change people's destiny by loving God. God and by serving him. And as I sat there, God took me to the scripture and it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and earth. I know that. I don't care if you believe that. I know that. And it goes on and says this. I, I sat there. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And I, I knew that because I've read this scripture a lot of times. But the very next part grabbed me and I sat there literally for probably 25, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, I don't know, sitting there just pondering and reading and rereading Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. This is what it says next. Don't hit that button. Hit that button. Oh, you thought it crashed again. I was ready to blame George. It's really good to blame George. It always works. Anyhow, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In other words, he was like hanging out there, flying. He's sitting there holding, just waiting that in the middle, and what's that mean to you? I want to show you what it means. You're dark. You're not walking with God. You're not talking with God. Maybe you're walking with God and talking with God, but you're not letting the light of God shine in you. You're trying to put all the boundaries of, to God, saying, God, I want to serve you, but don't touch that part of my life. I want to worship you, but don't ask me to do that. I want to serve you, but Lord, that area is off. off. And he's standing there, and it's that darkness of your life, and the Holy Spirit's literally there, there waiting. What's he waiting for? Well, the very next thing that happens is God says, and God said, let there be light. And what happens? It says, and there was light. What's that mean to me? And that's where I want to get into because there's a story here that God is showing that I never saw before in my entire life of reading the word of God, that God was sitting there and speaking to me and saying, Terry, I gave you the power to create. When the Holy Spirit comes into you, whenever the Holy Spirit's in your life, when the Holy Spirit's around you, and you're standing there, and all of you in here, you're, maybe if you don't know Jesus, you're really dark. You sit there, and, and if you, maybe you're only halfway into Jesus. Now, that means you're following him, but you're only following him when it's convenient. You're only following him when it fits your bill that you want. You know, God says, would you? And you're like, I'm not doing that. You see, God will never force you to do anything. If he wanted to, he created this universe. He could could force all of us to bow right now and all of us to sit there and cry uncle. But he's not like that. He wants you to serve him out of love. And he wants you to serve him out of that that joy of your heart to say, God, I just love you. And, And how many know that when you get in a real life love relationship, not the relationships the world says... But when I get in a real life love relationship and someone says, you know, I don't like that you do that, you'll quit it. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I'll never forget, I went out with this one girl when I was a teenager and she wanted to go out with me and I said, okay, I'll go out with her. My, my sister-in-law fixed me up with her and I went out with her and we had fun. fun. She was kind of pretty, good looking, all that kind of stuff. And we had fun. We did all those things. So I took her out for a pizza and I got her pizza and in the first three bites, I knew I never wanted to see her again. She sat there and she went. Now, if there's one thing that wants to drive me crazy, is it's when people chew with their mouth shut open and you see their food and they sit there like. And I had to watch this girl eat like pizza for like 40 minutes with it. I don't know if it drives anyone else crazy. I'm just telling you my pet peeve. I was like, never again will I ever in my life ever go out with you again. I'm just sitting there having nightmares of seeing her at the kitchen table. Now, kids, stop that. And her food falling out of her mouth. All right? So, you know, it's that moment with God that, that, but when we love somebody, we'll change those kind of things. And you see, that's why God has saved all of us, because he's the first one to love all of us. And he's sitting there saying, I know there's darkness in your life, but 
All you have to do is speak the word and I will be the light. I will let the Holy Spirit come in and do something. At the moment that God said, and let there be light, that Holy Spirit who was sitting there just waiting for that moment wherever he was at. I don't know exactly where he was at. I don't know where he was standing at. I don't know what he was doing. I just know he was there and he was present because God tells me he was present. And at that moment that God said, let there be light, he moved from standing as a bystander or as a spectator and instantly he moved into that place place that darkness and begin to form something that I now see every day that I walk, that I breathe, that I eat, that I do everything around me, every bird, every creature was going to be because then God said, because God says, I don't want that to be your life. I don't want it to be dark. I don't want it to be that place in your life. I want to give you that life. I want to let you understand the light and I want to speak, but I can only do it if you'll say, let there be light. I can only do it if you'll give me permission. I can only do it if you and I, who are following Jesus, will let go of all the areas of our life and say, God, I want to be the person you want me to be. I want to walk where you want me to walk. I want to talk like you want me to talk. I want to live like you want me to live. And we'll literally say, okay, God, I know I've got this stuff in my life. I know that I can't control my tongue. I know that I have a temper. I know that I have this issue. I know that I'm addicted to this. But God, I'm just saying, God, I want you to be the light. Would you just come in and take care of it? And at that moment, the Holy Spirit has the right to move in your life, but he can never move in my life and become the creative force in my life until I release him, until you release him, until you will speak life, until you will sit there and say that. And it's so amazing and it's so awesome. And as I sat there and I looked at it, God literally let me see faces. And if you ask me if your face was there, I will say, Nanya. How many know what Nanyas are? It's called none your business. You know, I have a thought for you. It's called work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. My job is not to sit here and try to convince you to follow God. My job is to sit here and tell you the greatness of this God that I serve and how wonderful he wants to use every one of us. But in this place this morning and in this room this morning are people that are sitting here that God wants to use you to touch other people's lives and minister to other people's hearts and be the answer to addicts and be the answer to hopelessness and be the answer to suicide and be the answer to all kinds of problems that are all over America where God wants you to be the one that walks into the room and you speak life and God begins to move in those situations because he's a miracle working God but he's only the miracle working God if he has a vessel that is willing you see God could have looked at that and God could have stopped the whole Bible right there in Genesis chapter 1 the whole Bible God could have sat there you don't think he knew that Adam and Eve would deceive him you don't think he knew that Judas would betray him You don't think he knew that Noah and the flood would take place? Of course he did. You don't think he knew what man was going to do? He's not naive. He's all-knowing. He's supernatural. But God so loved the world that he said, I want this. I want to do this. I want a, 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 a people that worship me just because they love me. Isn't that what everyone in this room, we act like God? What do we look for? Well, How many of you date somebody or get married to someone because you can't stand them? What? There was that one. Gene, I'm not surprised. You were the one. I'm just saying. You're lucky that she has a little more patience with you than most. But how many of you did that? What did, you know, we sit there growing up, we, we sit there and we say, man, when I grow up, I want to find somebody who will love me. I want to have this house. I want to do this. I want to be cherished. That's what God was like. God has that same heart that was in God is in you and I. And how many times are our dreams shattered? And how many times are things ruined where we think, well, this guy's different. This girl's different. And they break your heart and they ruin it over and over. And we are the so messed up people because we break all the rules and expect to turn it out right. Remember the cake? Remember chocolate cake? If you were here that Sunday, remember chocolate cake. You can put all the ingredients together, but if you don't put them together in the right order, how many know it doesn't turn into chocolate cake? It turns into chocolate mess that you don't want to taste because it's nasty unless you're Garrett. He'll sit over there and eat anything. I don't know what that says about Liz. I'm just telling you that you picked... No, I won't go there. It's all good. But we sit there, 
and we expect it to work. We want to be loved that way. We want to be cherished that way. But we don't want to do it God's way. That's God's heart. God said, I want someone to serve me, and I know they're going to be a mess, and I know they're going to mess up, but I'm going to love them anyhow. And God wants you to experience that love and to know that love. But you've got to be willing to step into it. You see, there's more than just saying, God, I want to get to heaven. There's more than just saying, God, I want to be used of you. It's like saying, okay, God, whatever it takes that you need to take out of me, take out of me. Whatever is in me that needs to be moved out of the way, Lord, let it be moved out of the way. And God wants to come in, and he wants you to literally sit there, and the Holy Spirit's there waiting like, oh, man, God, this is a good one. We could use this one. Everyone in this room, he's looking at you, and he's like, man, I could use them. Man, I, I know people have said they're mental, but I love turning the mental into crazy for me. I know that people have said they're ugly, but I can make them beautiful. And God looks at every person, he looks at all the things people have said about you, that you're not rich enough, you're not tall enough, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not good looking enough, you're not athletic enough, you're not this, you're not that, you're not all of those things. And, and we sit there and we make excuses and God's like, if you just speak the word, what's he want you to say? Lord, let there be light there. Let there be like, we, we have the spirit of creativity in all of us that we can have the Holy Spirit sit there like, I want to change you. I don't want you to stay an addict. I don't want you to change and stay angry. I don't want your kids to see what a dysfunctional marriage is about. Now listen, you can go through your whole life blaming your husband or blaming your wife. Well, it's her fault. It's his fault. You know, we're really good at that as, as people, aren't we? Well, if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for that, it wasn't that. Let's be honest. Everyone in this room, you're somebody's pain. Everybody in this room, you're somebody's hurt that when they think about your name, it's hurt comes to their mind because they remember what you did to them and how you're to me. You aren't the only one that's been hurt. We're hurt. We hurt people. Whether it was the first time the sandbox when you had sand and the one kid, I don't want to, and you threw sand in their mouth. Come on. Maybe the first time you sat there and you were in high school and you talked about them behind their back and spread rumors about them. Go on, we do these things, we do them. And God's like, I want to heal that area in your life. And that's that darkness that made you become so dark where you don't trust anybody, you don't believe in anybody, you don't believe in God, you've seen this, you've seen that. Why could God let this happen in my life? If he was God, he wouldn't let it happen. No, it wasn't God that let it happen, it was man's disobedience that let it happen. And God wants to come down and create beauty out of it so that you can be a testimony and a hope to a dying world. But you've got to say yes. See, the problem with most people who call themselves Christians is they want to be a Christian, but they don't want any cost to it. If Jesus was willing to go through all that in my life, he then looks at me and says, what are you willing to do for me? You love me? You say you love me? He said, it's really easy. Keep my commandments. He said, my commandments are not grievous. They're only grievous to one place, my flesh. Because I don't like loving people that don't love me. I don't like being nice to people who cut me off. I don't like sitting there and when's the last time you went to the go-kart track and you spied out the slowest car and said, that's my car. If you've ever been to a go-kart track, that is not what you do. You stay in there, now my wife might. She's one of the least competitive people that I've ever met in my life and she drives me crazy for it, but it's all good because it takes away all my fun. But I did whoop her butt in, in putt-putt golf this week, so it was really exciting. I, did, I got two holes in the one. I was like, I was rocking. It was amazing. Thanks, Gene. I needed that. Coming from you, it don't mean much, though. Just saying. <laughs> but we've got to realize, God wants to use you. God wants to transform you. God wants to be that light in your life, but you've got to be willing. And what is that to mean? You might sit there and say that because we all go through this journey and we all stand there and God wants to release the spirit of creativity in your heart where he can release the Holy Spirit to come down and begin to take the darkness and make it into light and then separate all the things and make it where it's a place of life giving where instead of you going through the world and you're miserable and you're mean and you're always blaming your husband for the issue or your wife for the issue or if I would have had better kids or if I would have had better mom and dad or if I would have had more money or if I would have went to a better school or if I would have had this or if I would have done that well you can't can't change any of that. It's darkness. But you know what God says? I knew you in the womb. And even when I knit you together in the womb, I knew all the things that was going to happen in your life, but I also made a way 
that you could shine for the glory of God and be a testimony. I, I knew you that you were going to go through the pain and the hurt because man sinned and man fell and man screwed up. And I knew you were going to be in these miserable relationships. But I also wanted to be and show you what it's like to be really loved. I also wanted to show you what it's like to love even in pain. I wanted to show you what it was like to love people and be that light that, that you become the light in that darkness where God uses you to shine into other people's lives. But it's going to cost you something. It cost me saying yes, Lord, to the will of God and no, Lord, to my will. Because you know what? I don't always like what God wants me to do. I didn't realize the cost it would be on that day in December in 2001 when I got that phone call about this church and coming here and where we would all end up and all the craziness that has ensued in my life over the years and all the hell that went broke loose all around me and things that happened. I, I didn't know that, but you know what I know? I know that God is good. I would never want you to go through what I went through. But you know what? I pray I can shine through. And you, I, you won't want me to go through what you went through. Many of you sit there and you have your kids there. And I see parents here. You don't want your kids to have the life you had. That's why you sit there and you try to raise them different and teach them different. And, and, and don't want them to see the things you've done and, and be the places you've been. Maybe see the death you've seen and the destruction you've seen. You don't want them to go there. That's why you are willing to go there. And, and that's God. God said, I'm willing to go to the cross for you so you don't have to pay that price. Because that's what you are worthy of. When Jesus was there and he was paying the price for every one of us, that should have been all of us. I hear people say, God's not fair. Be glad he's not fair. Because it was unfair for him to send his son to pay the price for you and I. Be glad, because if we got what we deserve, not one of us would be here. Not one of us would have the privilege of living where we live and being what we be. But because God is, as the world calls him, unfair. He's really loving. And just like as a parent, you'll hear your kids say that all the time. It's one of their favorite things to say. You're not fair. How many have ever heard that line with kids? You never heard that one before. And you sit there and you say, all right, I'm not fair, but I love you. Well, so-and-so's mom lets us do that. And you've had the world-famous sign. Well, I'm not so-and-so's mom. Something just about like that. Why? Because you love them. Because you understand that that's what God so loved the world. That's what God was talking about with all of us. And he's looking at everyone in this room and he's saying, will you let go and go to the next level? Will you become more than just what you've been? And that's the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in all our lives. And I want to fly through this because I'm not going to get to this one today, okay? Let me get to this next one. God wants you to go from being reserved to what? To radical. God wants you to sit there and quit being reserved. This is the greatest adventure you could ever go on. I, I love reading the, uh, the article or the ad. And I don't know if you ever saw the, the ad that was posted. I'm trying to remember the explorer's name. Who was the first guy to go to the North Pole? Who was it? Thank you. Robert Perry. How many ever read his article, the ad that he posted? And it said... It's not going to be fun, and it's not going to be great, it's going to be cold, you may die, you blah, 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 but you have the chance to experience something that no one's ever going to experience again, and that's to be the first person at the North Pole. Can I tell you, that's what God's offering to all of you? God says, you know, it's not going to be easy, it's not going to be always fun, but it's going to be so amazing when you get there. Do you realize all the people that went with him, they came back and they experienced something that no one else did, and they were celebrities, and they, all these kind of things happened? Why? Because they were willing to do what? Take the risk and to take that chance. God is saying the same thing to every person in this place. Will you let go of your agenda in your life and sit there and say, God, I'm not going to be reserved anymore. I want to be a radical for you. I want you to use me for your glory. I want you to use me for your praise. I want to become God what you want me to become. That's what God offers to every human being that ever is birthed, every human being that's ever sits there and says, Mom, Dad. And God so loved the world that he gave. And he's asking you and I, are you willing to give? See, I'm not talking about being a Christian as I close who just sits there and just... I'm going to get to heaven someday. 
I want to be a good person. What is a good person? I don't even know what a good person looks like. I just know what a godly person looks like. Amazes me what we in America worship. We sit there and look at movie stars and rock singers and think they're all cool. And they're only on their fifth marriage. We sit there and think Whoopi Goldberg knows what she's talking about politics and she was a fake nun. You had to watch the movie to understand it. Twice. And the first time, I think she was a call girl too, wasn't she? So what do you think a person, never mind, we won't go there, enough of that. Her view's not the best view, let me just say that. You see, the world's all around us. We look at these actors who, ever dawn on you that every actor on TV is a liar? They're lying. They're not that person. They're acting. But we're like, oh, they're so wonderful. No, they're good liars. They're good at pretending. They're good at acting. God doesn't want that to be you. God wants you to be truthful and honest with them and say, God, I have darkness in my life. Would you stand with me this morning? You see, as I sat there and I read this verse, and I'm going to do a whole series on it called The Wild Ones. And you understand that next week when Maria learns the song that she was supposed to sing this week but failed. I just had to throw that out there. She don't care. <laughs> Violence. I want to challenge you in coming weeks to become what God's asking you to become. Do you realize if you do not step into, let me just say it this way. You know, I've even said this to my wife. What would have happened in 2001 if I would have closed my cell phone? Back then they were flip phones. I couldn't text and I couldn't get the internet, but I could talk and said, I don't want to go there. I don't know where your life would be, but I wouldn't be in it. I don't think this place would be here. You see, it takes people being willing, just like that ad, and just like God does in his word, will you let me release my creative spirit in your life and let you become the light? Will you let me into the dark places of your life? And the Bible says that whatever we ask, he does. And here's the Father glorified when we ask. And that was a scripture I passed. But you see, the Holy Spirit's standing back in your life. You keep trying it your way. You keep trying to do the things, just compromising with God. Yeah, God, I know I'll, I'll go to the rock and I'll hang out, but God, I'm not too sure I want to volunteer. I'm not too sure I want to get involved. I'm not too sure I want to go all the way in. I just, I want to stay in the peripheral, God. And God's like, oh, I want to use you. Oh, I want to touch you. Oh, I want to pan the people you could touch and the people you could change. I was going to say this to this person, and I'm not here to, I hope this is okay. I'm going to embarrass somebody. It's all good. One of the people that Beth and I talk about in our church is Brianna. Raise your hand, Brianna. Keep yours down, Cindy. Okay, <laughs> you're Cindy. Okay. That's Brianna. I'm amazed at how many people have come through this church or hang out here because of her. Because she just shared. I, she posted her, her baptismal thing, and he put, she put on it, and I never said this to anybody, but we did a thing today, right? And Noah said, and she had a picture of her getting baptized and Brad getting baptized and he's got a flower he needs baptized again. <laughs> and she had a picture of Brantley being baptized and is it, was anyone else baptized? Three ins? I watched it. I never said anything to her, but I watched the views. It's like 267 people, 300 people watched Brianna getting baptized. I thought, Man, God, that's called using our influence for the goodness of God. Now, you still need a lot of darkness to get light into, so don't think it's Brad's problem. I'm trying to get you out of this, Brad, okay? Just let you know the flower and all. 
But I thank God when I see people who are willing to say, you know what, I don't care what you think. God's changing my life. And that light goes out. That's what God has called everyone in this room and everyone around me to become is influencers. You can't stay there being reserved. You can't stay there being shy. You can't stay there, someone's going to get mad, sitting on a bar stool. You can't stay there hanging around the same old friends. God's calling you and saying, step into the light. I want you to be transformed. I want you to be changed. Now listen, somebody's like, but Pastor Terry, I can't get away. The light will get you away. Because when the Holy Spirit starts moving in your life, he'll pull it out of you. He'll transform it. He'll take that darkness and he'll change it. How many know that it amazes me when I read the story of Genesis that light came before the sun came? I don't know if you ever caught that or not, but that's just a fact. The light came before the sun came. That's because God is light. And it's so cool that that light started the whole process. And, and God wants to do it in your life. It's a process. It's not going to happen instantly. I wish I could like say, hey, come pray this prayer. Jump in the baptismal tank. Get out. You're going to be completely different. No, that's just a start. It's just a start of the walk. And you know what? I'm, I'm still walking with God. I'm still going through things. Now, I'm pretty cool and I'm pretty amazing. Ask my wife. She'll convince you otherwise, but it's all good. But you know what? There's still stuff he works on me every day. I still have areas in my life that I'm not sure I want the light in, but I have to make the choice to let the light there. Because I'm kind of like you. I like easy roads, don't you? I like easy things when they happen. I like when the easy jobs get done. I like it easy. I, I'm working on my master bathroom right now. I'm putting in a really cool master bathroom for my wife, and I did a whole bunch of remodeling, and I keep looking at my wife. She comes home, how was the day? I'm like, I really like building new things better than remodeling old things. <laughs> I don't have to deal with rotten floors and all this kind of rotten junk, but you know what? That's God so loved the world that he gave his only son that he chose to deal with rotten you. That if you'll let them in, if you'll let that light into your life, if you'll be willing to say, God, whatever it takes in my life, wherever you want to go, Lord, I'm willing to live. Now, if you're, you're lucky, you're getting the second service. The first service was a lot tougher. I don't know why, but it just was. Because they needed it. But God can only do it if you let him. And this morning, I'm going to ask you to do something. Now, God does not like people who are ashamed of me. He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I don't ever want to be ashamed of God. But you know what? I even fight with that. You know, some days I pull out my Jesus Freak shirt on, I put it on, and I walk out. Even sometimes I dress like this, and I'm like, what are they going to think of a pastor who dressed? I tried to dress as crazy this morning as I possibly could. If you would have saw the cool tie-dye shirt that I wanted that my wife wouldn't let me buy, my feelings are still hurt over it. It was like fluorescent yellow, and it was so cool. I really would have made it look good. But I, I like doing this because, you know what, it's good to be... There's days I put my Jesus freak on, and I'm like, what do people think? I had a pastor in this area who called me to his office at one point in time and said, so, do you think every pastor ought to wear skinny jeans? No, you have to know me. I said no, because some would look really bad in skinny jeans. <laughs> Not sure they like that comment, but that's just who I am. He said, does that make you more anointed? And I said, no, this is just what I want to be. But some days my flesh would just like to be normal. But somewhere in my life, God said, I don't want normal. I want to put the light in there. And I want you to be abnormal. And can I tell you something? God wants you to be abnormal. God wants you to get outside of yourself and step into places and let them shine in places that you wouldn't let them shine. That may be your past. That may be your hurts, your wounds, but he wants to shine. And this morning, I want you to do something. I want you to get out of your seat. If you're willing to say, God, I want you to create in me a new heart. I want you to do whatever it takes to make me shine. I want to be, Lord. I want to start saying first off, and you're going to have lots of chance to do this, but don't miss today, and say, God, I want to be a radical for you. If that's you, get out of your seat. It's real easy. You put one foot in front of the other, and you walk to the front of the church, and you say, God, I'm here. I want to be a radical. I don't like the darkness in my life. 
I don't like what I am at times. I don't like how I act at times. I don't like what I say at times. I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. It's what God's asking for every one of us to be, transformed. Amy, come here. Told you I was going to use you today. Everyone see your face? This is reserved. This is radical. You know why I called you up here? I used to be just like you. Can you believe that? I Really, I am not kidding you at all. I used to be like walk into the room and my friend would be like, he was like me and I was like you and I'd watch him talk to everybody and I'd be like, mm. and it's not a bad thing. But you know what? It's not what God wants us to be. And I'm not saying you're not what God wants to be, so I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm just trying to say, if he can do it to me and take me from that, you are the best example I could think of of me. <laughs> That's scary right there. <laughs> oh, you ought to get married to God and turn to me. <laughs> you can go back down there. Thank you. I was her. I was shy. I was, once you got to know me, I'd talk to you. But when I walked into the room, I thought everyone was looking at me funny. I thought everyone thought I was weird. Now I know everyone thinks I'm weird, and it's good. Can I tell you that's the transformation God wants to make in every life in this place? He wants to make you so radical and so crazy and so amazed that you're so in love with Him. Yes, I still struggle some days with wearing my Jesus shirt. Yes, some days I still struggle with going on prayer walks, even though I know I have to. Some days I really hate stupid drivers. That's a story for another time. But you know what? I know one thing. I've decided I want Jesus in here more than I want anything else in my life. I want the Holy Spirit to create in me something so amazing that when the church world walks in, they look at me and they go, someday I hope I get to stand in front of pastors like this and say, be weird, be crazy, yeah. because the world's looking for something, hope. Can I tell you something? On your job, someone's waiting for you to shine. Today in the grocery cart store, someone's gonna run their cart in the back of your ankles. Please tell me who that prophetic word is for, all right? And you're gonna be like, it's okay. Jesus loves you and thinks you're amazing. I hate you. <laughs> let the light shine. It's okay, but let the light into that darkness. Pastor Terry, I can't stand you. You prophesied over my ankles. God loves you. I want to just pray with you this morning. Maybe you was out there and you were scared to walk up here. I hope someday that you can walk up and say, God, I want you to do whatever you want. But this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity just to pray it. Matter of fact, you'll turn the lights down for me. Thanks, because I don't want people to be embarrassed. But I want you to just pray with me. Father, I'm here. I want you to change me. Holy Spirit, I ask you to be my light. Let there be light. I'm tired of being dark. I'm tired of being that place, God, that Oh, I get angry so easy. I get mad so easy. I get tempted so easy. I get distracted so easy. I value what my friends think so much. I, I worry about worldly things so much. I worry about my truck so much, my car so much. God, when it gets a ding in it, I get mad. When someone eats my favorite piece of food, I get mad. I just pray, God, that you just take that out of my heart and my life. And God, just use me for your glory and let the light of the gospel shine in the, the dark areas of my life. God, I'm tired of being reserved. I'm tired of being shy. I'm tired of being backwards. I'm tired of worrying, Lord, about what people think about me because, Lord, I am popular and I don't want people to think that I'm weird because I follow Jesus and, and I talk about Jesus. Lord, I, I want to be a superstar. I want to be that person that everyone likes, but God, I let the light into it because God, I want to be what you like. I want to be what you can use. I want to be hope for the suicidal. 
I want to stand up for the bullied. I want to love the hurting. I want to be the hope for the attic. I want, Lord, not to cause pain anymore like I have in people's lives. I don't want to have that short temper. God, I let the light in. I say, God created me. Let there be light in that dark area. That, God, I would know you. And, Lord, I thank you and I praise you. God, I know it will be a process. I know it will take time. I know because I'm praying that this week that someone's going to push my buttons. I know that something's going to try to bring it back all up again. But God, in that moment, let me remember to pray for the light. Let me remember to be the light and say, not today. I'm changed. I'm different. Because God, I ask. And God, I'll give you all the glory and all the honor and the praise. And I thank you for the journey you're taking me on. I thank you for the steps you're taking me. And God, I'll give you all the glory and all the honor and the praise. And everyone said, amen. Amen. All right, now we're going to do something different. We're all going to pray for Amy that she turns into me so Todd goes crazy. (laughs) Uh, They're getting married this Saturday. That's pretty cool. We'll be, hey, since we can't have a celebration, we'll put you two behind the thing. We'll throw cake at you. That's a great idea. You like it, huh? Gene thinks it's a great idea. No, you too. No, but we'll be doing something special for them when they get back. We'll make sure it's really memorable and special. (laughs) Not sure it is yet, but I have like minds who conspire with me. I pray that God will let it get loud in your life. And it starts by this right here. I may not be perfect. I may not be complete. I'm not that way. But you know what? I'm learning how to praise him. And I want you to learn how to praise him. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Thinks you're amazing. Can I praise 
Why can't I praise Him as loud as I want? Why can't I praise Him as loud as I want? Why can't I praise Him as loud as I want? Why can't I praise Him as loud as I want? Why can't I praise Him as loud as I want? Why can't I praise Him as loud as I want? Why can't